Population genetics is the study of heredity in a population. A population is a group of individuals of the same species occupying a given area at a certain time. This is important because populations can change over time. Genetics is the study of heredity. So population genetics is the study of heredity within a given population. Joke time. Why the long face? Heredity. Moving on. A species is a group of populations whose individuals have the potential to interbreed and produce fertile offspring in nature. Members of a population are more likely to breed within the same population, so genes tend to stay in the same population for generations. A gene pool is all the genes in all the members of a population at one time. Immigration, or individuals coming into the population, increases the gene pool, and emigration, or individuals leaving the population, decreases it. Evolution is the gradual change in the frequency of genes in a gene pool. Natural selection is the basis for evolution. Natural selection is when some traits are better equipped for survival in a given environment. They are naturally selected for through survival of the fittest. Example of natural selection is Darwin's finches. Darwin noticed that the finches have different beak shapes, which made them really good at getting a certain type of food. Survival of the fittest does not always mean survival of the strongest, fastest, or toughest. It can mean survival of the smartest. It can be the best at camouflage. Notice how that chameleon is so good at camouflaging, he can't even see it. It could mean the animals or plants, which are best at cooperating. So we have a bee and a flower. We have a symbiotic relationship here. Bees benefit by getting nectar from the flower. And the flower benefits because the bees spread the pollen to other flowers. Or it can mean the animal or plant that produces the most seeds or the most offspring. They are successful just because of sheer numbers. Variation among organisms may be in physical appearance. Metabolism, which means all of the chemical reactions that happen in their body. Fertility, how often they mate, how many offspring they have. Mode of reproduction, do they reproduce sexually or asexually. And behavior, many different behaviors. It could be that they, they have a dance for courtship. It could be that they fly south for the winter. It could be that they gather together in herds for warmth or for protection. Variation amongst organisms is dependent on variation in their genes. Certain genotypes are better equipped than others for survival. Sexual reproduction ensures that variations get passed on to offspring. This leads to natural selection for individuals in given conditions. Studying humans is problematic because we have few offspring, maybe one or two at most at once, we have slow reproductive time, it takes nine months, gestation period, and the environment can affect phenotype. Remember, that means the environment can affect how the traits show up. For example, the sun can darken skin. How do we study human populations then? Through population sampling. Population sampling is when we select a small sample of individuals from the population. We find the gene frequencies for a particular genetic trait in that sample. We apply gene frequencies then to the whole population, assuming that that selection that we had was a good representation of the entire population. Then this allows scientists to analyze trends over time, so whether evolution is occurring or not. Now gene frequencies is how often a gene shows up in a population. So frequency is equivalent to a percentage divided by 100. For example, if the recessive phenotype in a population showed up 30% of the time, then we could say that the frequency of the recessive genotype is 0 0.3. Sometimes gene frequencies are associated with certain populations. 
For example, Swedish people are mostly blonde haired and blue eyed. We say frequency of blonde hair and blue eyes is high in this population. The recessive allele that causes sickle cell anemia has different frequencies throughout Africa. And this is because the heterozygous condition provides immunity to malaria. So that means they have a selective advantage in areas where malaria is high to have resistance against it. And that's why we still have sickle cell anemia in the world. When we're studying gene frequencies, we must use the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium states that under specific conditions, after one generation of random mating, gene and allele frequencies, or the gene pool, will be stable from generation to generation. Conditions necessary for the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium include that there is a large population because if a few members change within that population, it doesn't affect the frequencies in the large population. Random mating, which means individuals, all individuals, have equal chance of passing on their genes. No genetic drift. Genetic drift means that there is a huge reduction in the size of the population and the gene frequencies are different than the original population. No gene flow which means no migration, that's no immigration or emigration, so individuals in or out doesn't happen. No natural selection, which we know cannot possibly happen because there's always natural selection. And finally, no mutations. Mutations, remember, are changes in DNA that can be passed on. I don't make these up, they're online. Okay, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium formulae, there are two of them, one for the alleles, which states that the genotype of the dominant allele in a population, which is represented by P, plus the genotype of the recessive allele in a population. When you add up all the alleles, they add to 100% of the alleles in the population, and that's what the number one stands for. Then we have the formula for genotypes. P squared is the frequency of the homozygous genotype. When we add that to 2PQ, frequency of the heterozygous genotype, and the genotype for the re homozygous recessive genotype, then that also adds to 100% of the genotypes in the population. These formulae allow scientists to determine whether evolution has occurred. So changes in the gene frequencies over time indicates that there is evolution. No change in the gene frequencies indicates stability or no evolution. The Hardy-Weinberg law states that if no evolution is occurring, then an equilibrium of allele frequencies will remain in effect in each succeeding generation of sexually reproducing individuals. So in layman's terms, that means that the allele frequencies stay the same from one generation to the next. They do not change, and therefore Hardy equilibrium, Hardy-Weinberg equilib equilibrium is in effect. Finding the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Going back to monohybrid crosses, if we Take that tongue rolling is capital R, and non-tongue rolling is little r. And then we apply it, our Hardy-Weinberg variables to this. Then P is the dominant allele, Q is the recessive allele. And when we multiply them together, P times P mathematically is P squared. P times Q, we write P next to Q, another PQ, and Q times Q is Q squared. So this is where Hardy and Weinberg came up with their equation, P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Okay, now let's add some numbers to it and see if this is true. So if P, the dominant allele frequency, is 0 0.6, then we'll put that value in for P, and Q is 0 0.4. When we multiply them together, we get that P squared is 0 0.36, PQ is 0 0.24, another 0 0.24, and then Q squared is 0 
So when we add these together, no surprise here, they add to 1, which means that it's true that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. So if we know the frequency of the dominant allele and the frequency of the recessive allele, then we can calculate the frequency of the genotypes, p squared, 2pq, and q squared. For more information on how to solve Hardy-Weinberg problems, click on this link.